Kelly Oubre's free agency is going to be looked back on with a lot of confusion. While he has flaws, as everyone does, 20 a night guys don't grow on trees, and a whole lot of NBA GMs miscalculated this one. Oubre has really turned it up a notch lately, and as a Sixers fan, I love what he brings to us on a minimum contract. Not the mid-level, a minimum deal. This is the main point of the video, so I will discuss it more, but the fact that a 20 a night guy had to settle for a minimum contract in this NBA is crazy. Kelly has come out with something to prove on his minimum deal, and he has done that. Today I'm going to be reviewing Kelly Oubre's season in Philly, his recent heater, and the insanity of him not getting a decent contract offer as a 20 a night guy. Before we get into this, if y'all could like the video, sub the channel, and hit that noti bell, I would really, really appreciate it. Would help me out a ton, and without further ado, let's get right into the video. There's a ton to discuss with Kelly Oubre, but I want to start with this recent stretch. Over his past five games, three of which were with Joel Embiid, Oubre has been on an absolute heater. He's averaging 24, 7, and 3 on 52, 46, 76 for a true shooting percentage of nearly 65. I truly cannot emphasize how huge Kelly has been, namely in the two of these games where Joel Embiid did not play. He had 32 against Toronto and 26 against the Spurs on good efficiency, and these games are absolutely huge for the Sixers headed down the stretch. We are currently fighting to get out of the play-in, or at least get a home 7-8 matchup and hopefully avoid the title favorite Celtics in the first round. While he has had three great games and two solid ones in this stretch, I want to key in on the double overtime thriller Sunday night in San Antonio. Kelly got off to a blazing start, dropping in 12 on 5 for 6 shooting in the first quarter. He cooled off a bit in the middle of the game, but really came through clutch in the fourth, scoring 8 on 4 for 6 and helping this game that looked out of reach to me get to overtime. While he only had 2 points in the 2 overtimes, the Sixers don't reach overtime without his 4th quarter performance and definitely don't win without his fairly efficient 26 points. I understand how Oubre can be polarizing for some, he definitely has his moments, but from the jump I love the value of this signing. Wing depth has been a major issue throughout the Embiid era, and despite his flaws, having an athletic wing who can drop 20 on any night for 5% of the yearly salary of Tobias Harris is a blessing. I can understand how some would take a gander at his stats and not think too highly of him, but valuable context is missing from simple stats. For the Sixers winning purposes, Oubre has shown to excel when playing alongside Joel Embiid. Are his struggles without Joel a good thing per se? Of course not, but as we can see with this Sixers roster, just about anyone will get worse when they don't have a 35-11-6 guy that's taking the pressure off of them. Looking at 31% from deep in the league today is not great, but when the Sixers are fully healthy, Oubre has shown that he can take less shots and be more efficient in the ones that he does take. These numbers are pretty jarring. And you can't help but think these are an indictment of Kelly, but we still have additional context. Without Joel, Kelly has moved into a featured role and is not only taking more, but tougher shots. This team is a lottery team without Joel, and the Sixers without Embiid is far from the ideal scenario for Oubre to thrive. Basically, is he a lot better with Embiid than without? Yes, but I think he could replicate this in other scenarios playing with a playoff level supporting cast that doesn't necessarily include an MVP level guy. I think Oubre has found his role in this league as an efficient 12 to 14 point guy who can be a huge energy guy. Enough rambling, let's get into the numbers that make me feel great about Oubre headed into a playoff run alongside the reigning MVP. In 36 games without Joel Embiid, Kelly Oubre is averaging 17, 5, and 2 on 42, 28, 76 for a true shooting percentage of 51. Far from ideal, obviously, but Kelly has been forced into a volume scoring role all of a sudden on, again, a lottery quality team. Would you like to see better than this? Obviously, but I'm here to say this shouldn't cause as much concern as you may think. In 29 games with Joel Embiid this season, Kelly Oubre is averaging 13, 4, and 1 on 49, 36, 71 for a true shooting percentage of 58.9. A lot better, right? And this is where my point about, you know, him finding his role as a 12 to 14 a night guy that isn't, you know, a main featured offensive guy. Because the reality is, if Kelly Oubre is one of your main featured offensive guys, the team's probably not going to be that good, right? Not that Kelly isn't talented enough to be a good starter or a really, really good six man, but that's the point. He's a solid starter and a six man. He's not a first, second, or third option on a good playoff team. 
Everyone benefits from the gravity of the MVP, but with what Oubre is capable of at his best, I think he could be a real X factor for the Sixers come playoff time. Me and every Sixers fan is praying that Nick Nurse is seeing what we do right now and decides that Kelly and Nico Batum will be our starting wings come playoff time. Kelly's energy is something that I haven't discussed much, but is definitely a huge factor in me wanting this. While some of this is inevitably shiny new toy logic, his energy compared to Tobias Harris makes it especially a point. While this isn't the best way to quantify total defense, I think steals and blocks can help to understand his energy. When Kelly gets a block, it's like an injection of energy to any and everyone who witnessed it. Oftentimes, it is a resounding block that can be a huge momentum boost. In my video I posted where we signed Kelly, I thought the Nick Nurse would be able to rejuvenate him defensively, especially considering his lesser offensive role, and he has done that. While what Kelly brings to the Sixers team as they fight to get out of the play in is huge, I want to end this off by discussing his free agency this past summer. I understand the stigma against straight scorers that exist now, but the fact that this man had to settle for a $2 million minimum deal after averaging over 20 a night is insane. It should have been obvious to many that Kelly could be more effective and efficient in a lesser role, as he has displayed that throughout his career. I'm not saying he deserved a big contract, but the fact that in this day and age, Oubre couldn't even get someone's mid-level is insane. And selfishly, I'm happy it went this way. I and many in Philly love Kelly, and we now have the opportunity to bring him back on a solid deal. I would like something in and around 3 years and 25 to 30 million if he doesn't get a bigger offer. His struggles without Embiid make me think that will be about his market value, but a team offering 12-ish a year isn't out of the question. No matter what happens with Kelly Oubre this offseason, he has earned at least some level of a payday and can earn a whole lot more these playoffs. The Oubre signing has been a home run for the Sixers, and all of Philly is hoping he can continue his recent play into this playoff run. That's going to wrap this one up. If y'all enjoyed it, please like it up, sub to the channel, and hit that noti bell. Comment down below your thoughts on Oubre, you know, Philly fan, not Philly fan. You know, man, he's been going crazy, crazy as of late. Huge, huge part in this late push to, you know, get us out of the play-in, or at least get us to 7 seed. And it was a signing that I always loved and it always confused me. Again, I know I've repeated this 40 times <laughs> throughout this video, but man, $2 million for a guy who is, you know, I, I never even discussed his season stats, which is kind of funny. Uh, I didn't even mention his total season stats once. I just, you know, pretty much split his season in half in the with and without Joel. But for a 15 a night guy in totality on a playoff team now, and, you know, a 13 a night guy with Joel, which is when we're, you know, an elite team. You know, I, we, were, we were, I mean, I don't know what it is now. I think it's 29 and 8 now. I believe it was 26 and 8 with Joel before the injury. So he has shown that he can play winning basketball. And he's also, you know, man, I, I, just, I just love Kelly too. He appears, you know, really good locker room guy. Got hit by that car earlier in the season, which I didn't talk about that at all either. That's crazy. I didn't even mention that whatsoever. And I, that was like, bro, when I got that notification, I was like, bro, what? Like, what? But Oubre has not played in the playoffs in a very, very long time, but I'm really, really excited to see what he can bring to the table in this Sixers playoff run. Praying he's the starter. If not, you know, we'll deal with that. But that's going to wrap this one up. If you're still here, comment bubbly. I'm drinking a bubbly, and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.